Welcome to Aptitude Destination. Today we are going to see how to solve calendar sums, but not in a conventional way, in a code method which will save a lot of your time. So before we jump into the method, you need to by heart these codes that I have put up. Please do take a screenshot or please do note down these codes. If you see in the year codes, these two are the most frequently asked codes and 2000 to 2099 is the most important. UPSC will not ask you 1800 or 1700, so you don't have to by heart all the other codes. And in the day code, you can see that Sunday to Saturday, it's just from zero to six. The only thing that you need to by heart is the month codes. Please do take some effort to by heart this because this is going to save you a lot of time and it's 100% accurate. Please do watch this video completely because there is a single exception case where this code needs to be modified just a little bit. So please do stay till the end of the video. Let's move on to the method now. I'm taking a random date, July 7, 2000. So there is a total of five different steps that you need to follow. Just five steps and you'll arrive at the answer. Let's go with step one. Step one is to write the last two digits of the year given. Only the last two digits, even if it's 1998 or 1898 or 2002 or 2000, you just have to write the last two digits of the year given. So here are the last two digits, it's just zero, zero. The second step is to divide step one by four and write the quotient. For example, zero divided by four is zero, the quotient is zero. So for zero, one, two, and three, the quotient is going to be zero. Only when it is four, the quotient is going to start from one. The catch here is you just have to write the quotient. Do not worry about the remainder. You should not put any decimal values. You just have to write the quotient straight away. If there is 10, you have to write two. If there is eight, you have to write two. If there is 12, you have to write three and so on. Do not worry about the remainder. Let's move on to the third step. The third step is to write the year code. So check the box here. It's 2000, so what is the code? It's six, right? So you put six here. Moving on to the next step, you have to write the month code now. So check this box right here. The month is July, so what is the code? It's six, right? So we write six here again. The next step, step number five, is very simple because you're just going to copy down whatever date they have given. So it's July 7, you're going to write 7. Moving on to the last step, we are going to add all of these. 6 plus 6 plus 7, which is 12 plus 7, which is 19. Now please listen carefully what we have to do with this number. Whatever sum you're getting, you need to divide it by 7 and then see the remainder. So we are going to divide 19 by 7 and we are going to find out what is the remainder when we divide this sum by 7. Now we know that 7 twos are 14 so the quotient is 2 and the remainder is 5. Now this number is your final answer. Check this number with the code box that I've given. 5 is Friday. So your answer is Friday. July 7, 2000 is a Friday. Now let's try and solve the same sum with a different year. Let's take 2013 for example. Uh, let July 7 be as such. So now the year will become 13. And when dividing 13 by 4, we just have to write the quotient which is 3. Because 4 threes are 12. Just the quotient, not the reminder. So all the other 3 values are going to be the same because year is between 2000 to 2099. Month is July and date is 7. Now the total will become 25, right? Now we have to divide 25 by 7 and take the remainder out. So 25 by 7, the quotient is 3 because 7 threes are 21 and the remainder is 4. So what is the code of 4? It's Thursday, right? So 4 is Thursday, hence the answer for July 7, 2013 is Thursday. Now let's move on to the small exception case. So I'm taking a date of January, say, 17, 2020. So the exception is that when the given year is a leap year, you know what a leap year is, 
a leap year is when the year is completely divisible by 4. So the exception is when the given year is a leap year and it's in the month of January or February. This is the only condition. If it's any other month, even when it's a leap year, you do not need to worry. But if it's January or February and a leap year, you're going to consider this exception. And the exception is very simple. You're going to follow the exact same steps, but whatever answer you get, you're going to subtract one from it. This is the only extra step that you need to perform. So let's go ahead and solve this sum. Now you see it's a leap year and it's in the month of January. So this follows the exception case. The first step, we're going to write the last two digits of the year. The second step, we are going to divide it by four and write the quotient. 20 by four is five. The third step, we are going to write the year code. You see the year code here is six. The fourth step is to write the month code. You see the code for January is zero. The fifth step is to write the date, which is 17. Let us add all these up. We are getting 48. Let's divide 48 by seven and find the remainder. When you divide 48 by seven, the quotient will be six. Seven, six are 42. So the reminder will be six. Now, if you see six as per the code is Saturday, but since this is an exception case, we are going to subtract one from six, which is five. And the answer will be Friday and not Saturday. That is basically it for this method. I hope you all understood this method. This is going to help you in your UPSC or any competitive exam to save time. If you have any queries or any requests to solve a particular sum, please feel free to comment down below or email aptitude destination.